Comedians in Kelowna. Uh, the only show that's clearly about children's book authors from Saskatoon. Um, <laughs> let's meet our comedians. We've got Dorian Elliott. <laughs> Jasmine Towers. Cam Woodman. And for the green team, we've got Taryn Anderson. <laughs> Stefan Meng. And Sarah Dawn. And I'm your host, Jordan Simon. Let's play Fact or Fib. Sarah, let's go to you now. Ooh, nice embossment, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm opening my letter from Hogwarts. <laughs> I once sang Whitney Houston's I Wanna Dance With Somebody in a biker bar. <laughs> how is it that you were singing in a biker bar? Okay, so, I don't know how long you guys have lived in Kelowna, but there used to be this bar in Rutland, and it was called the North of 40. And I've been going there since I was 18, which is illegal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so I used to go there, and they would, they, they would announce when I came in, because I went there so much, and I think I might have been like the only person bringing in clientele who were also <laughs> illegally underage children <laughs> to go to this bar. So when I came in, they called me Trouble. They would call me Trouble over the thing. they go, here comes Trouble. <laughs> and, uh, and so I went in, and it's not always a biker bar, but sometimes it's, it's like their other clientele was definitely questionable, and I was so young that I'd be like, why are all these guys going in the bathroom together? And so um, there were like a ton of bikes outside of the outside of the bar, and I was like, oh neat. I went in, I was pretty good at pool. I ended up chatting with some of these older gentlemen, many of whom reminded me of Santa Claus and are in fact not scary at all. But it is weird to have so many images of like, you know, injured women on your body, um, <laughs> tattooed forever. So that part was weird, right? That was definitely an odd moment. But I'm sorry, I've been answering this forever. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Bring it. I, I want this to is how she it. does stand up. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a tell. So, how, how did it transition to? <laughs> to me singing. Yes. Okay. Yes, the thing. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> okay, so no, I was in there and I was chatting with. Santa, his name was probably <laughs> Jake or something. I don't know. It was Santa. Um, and he he was like talking. We ended up talking about like toxic masculinity <laughs> and how he didn't feel like free to express himself. And there were I was like, dude, if you love Whitney Houston, just go with it, right? I was like, you don't have to be afraid. I'll I'll do it first. So I got up on the pool table. On the pool table. Yes, and oh. I started singing along with the radio, which was Whitney Houston's "I Want to Dance with Somebody." And when I got to the part where I was like, "I want to feel the heat," you know, when it gets really high, he like got into it and was like, "That's it." And I feel like we really broke down a barrier for him. He got up on the pool table that as well. Like tangled. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Like yes. Tangled. It so was. Beautiful. Sarah is a Disney princess. So it was an amazing moment for all of us. Like after that, he might have called his daughter. I don't know. <laughs> but I was just trying to help him become who he is. You know? you know, it's so it's such a good story, and I am so leaning to believing you. However, okay. there were other underage people who also went to the North of Forty. Namely me, and <laughs> it is a country bar. Whitney Houston never graced the pounding speakers of that country bar. Not when I was in there. Because <laughs> <laughs> trouble walked. Trouble I was walked allowed in. to ask for stuff. I was sleeping with the DJ. <laughs> 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 so you requested Whitney Houston? I did. Oh. Well, because he had said that he loved Whitney Houston, but that he w he had yeah. all he had to listen to ACDC all day. Can you imagine that's your world? <laughs> like you have to just it does loudly listen to ACDC, <laughs> even though you really want to be listening to the sweet, sweet sounds yeah, of Whitney Houston. Whitney. <laughs> My favorite is picturing like aged Santa getting up on a pool table, just like flopping and then rolling. And then t I can't even do that now. I'd be like, oh my gosh, I can't get up on this table. He did have some Sorry, trouble because of the bow leggedness from riding his bike all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but he made it up, you guys. He's, I like this Santa guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know about this one, I, guys. You know, I want it to be true, and I think I believe the little part that he talked to his daughter after and all these <laughs> things. 
But I'm worried about the logistics because normal people are really persnickety about what may touch the surface of a pool table. Ooh, good one. one. But not at this. This was literally the pool table looked like someone had thrown up on it <laughs> oh. every day for like every a year day. and a half. <laughs> and then you thought you could get one in. Yeah. It was someone's like sad job to have to clean that pool table. Before Your ball just was like <laughs> with like a scraper, oh, you know. Oh. Just but they like had to clean morning. it every time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. voting. I want it to be true. Yeah, <laughs> I, know. I, I, I feel like. True. I, think I am ready to I'm, vote. I am. I, I'm I, way too competitive. I want it to be true so bad, but I, 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 I can't. You know what? I. Solidarity, Don. Solidarity. <laughs> oh, we're, we're in this together. We came oh, oh my God. God! There we go. Point for us. I literally <laughs> thought it was true. <laughs> <laughs> I I no this is how much I'm in love with Sarah. Like, <laughs> anything, you say, anything you say is correct. Almost oh, everything about that story wow. was true, except for the song. Except for the song. You were really on the pool table. So you were, you, you were on, on a with pool the table. I did dance on a pool table with an older man at the North of Forty. <laughs> Amazing. But you got me. It was a country bar. It was Dolly Parton, you guys. It was working. I'm working nine to five. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Okay, there's got to be a mutated gold star for that. Bravo. It's the Dolly star. Oh, they have a great pool table. <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah. Did it close after they found out how many underage patrons they had attending every day? You know, I think it closed because the owner was like, I don't want to talk to these people anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anyone remember the willow? Am I like old enough that is there anyone in this room that remembers the willow? I remember the willow. Remember. Thank goodness. <laughs> oh, that place was so trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I saw it. It's kind of like kindred spirit yeah. drinking buddies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're just finding one another. <laughs> Again, the willow's not here anymore. <laughs> yeah. uh, I saw brothers. someone steal a bike and then bring it in there. <laughs> and nobody said anything. We were all just like, all right. No one tried to sell cheese to be in there. <laughs> like, opened up with like a $10 brick of cheese and was like, do you want some cheese? And I was like, I don't even know what to say right That's a good deal. Was this, also a, a deal. Deal. was this also a rat in a trench coat? <laughs> <laughs> you buy that cheese every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. I was like, I don't want the cheese. <laughs> That's later cheese. Later cheese. <laughs> like That's bacon. midnight cheese. <laughs> Midnight cheese. That seems like a great segue to go. <laughs> oh, is it me? You're up. Oh. I hope it's a cheese-based yeah, lie. Cheese oh, I hope it's a cheese-based lie, too. I once made Eddie Murphy laugh. Okay, how did you meet Eddie Murphy? Um, I met Eddie Murphy outside of a building in Vancouver. Wow. I feel like I was there. <laughs> I did. I was outside of, of a building, and uh, like a big high-rise building, because it's the city. And, um, and, I, and I met Eddie Murphy, and he is a lot shorter than I thought. Sorry, Eddie, if that offends you. But um, he was a lot smaller of a person and, because I'm quite tall, and I was like, oh, Eddie. You're just a wee one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was he filming anything at this time? He was he was not filming. He was standing outside having a cigar. A cigar? Yes. But why was he in Vancouver? I didn't get into it with oh, him okay. because I was too busy being like, holy expletive, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> 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 what the, what the is happening here. right now? <laughs> Eddie. Yeah. And there were some bodyguards that were there, and they were very robust, so I didn't want to throw my weight around, figuratively and literally. Yeah. <laughs> How were you, like, were you one-on-one -on -one with him? Or, like, was there a bunch of people around? It, it was very weird. It was one-on-one. -on -one. It was a one-on-one, -on -one, some bodyguards. Um... I've had this dream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if I recall correctly, there was a very tall, beautiful woman in a big fur coat. Oh, I've definitely had this too. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wait. <laughs> yeah, and he really laughs like you see on TV. Like he actually, I won't imitate it because I will not do it justice, but that like, you know, 
<laughs> that one. Ah, like yeah, like yeah, 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 the one. He actually laughs like that, and uh, yeah. I may or may not have been uh, <clears throat> drinking that evening, so my memory is unclear, but. Do you remember what you said that made him laugh? Um, I think it was just my sheer discomfort <laughs> 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 that he laughed, and then it rang through my ears like, you know, a melody, his like, uh, uh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Sounded like the count <laughs> with the game. <laughs> 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 totally uh, uh, with the count. Totally. That's Eddie Murphy. Yeah. With What's a big that? cigar. Was and he a Muppet? He <laughs> may or may not have been a Muppet. It wasn't I the real Eddie Murphy. Murphy. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was one of the best experiences of my life because I am rarely speechless, like almost never speechless, and I was completely because, yeah, it's Eddie. So he laughed at you, not with you. You're 100% okay. at me. 100% <laughs> at me. There is no way that I made Eddie Murphy laugh because of my wit or charm. Uh. 100%. Yeah. Why? Okay, so I'm picturing this as you, like, in a back alley <laughs> behind a building in Vancouver. Now, I, too, have... <laughs> had a few drinks and been walking home in the city. My question is, why were you in a back alley? <laughs> this is a good question. I had come down from the apartment that I was at a party and we were, I had come down in the elevator and um, got a bit mixed around. That might have been because I was at the party. And then uh, took the back stair route out into the back alley, which surprise, then I was on in the alley and not at the front of the building. Mm. Yeah. How old were you? Um, it's maybe 24, 25. The last year. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> are we ready? Oh, uh, we are. I think so. Here we go. Okay. I choose to believe it. I choose to well, fit. <laughs> you know what? God, go. Jenna. Oh, dang it. Okay. You it. Bravo, All right. bravo, bravo. Right. It's a team victory. It's Thank a team goodness victory. For my team. <laughs> Every single scrap of that was true. Wow. Every, there's not a single, I don't lie you when it's my so truth. Vague. Yeah, I, you were so vague. Because, <laughs> I, 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 because I couldn't, I was like, uh, yeah. So let me get this straight. You were really standing in front of a building in Vancouver? <laughs> <laughs> I was in front of a building, and I was actually behind a building, and Eddie Murphy was really there, and I was really inebriated, and I walked out, and there is like Eddie Murphy. Like, how do you even handle that? And I, I think I probably made sounds like, <laughs> and then he's laughed, and I stood there for a little while longer, and that was my closest I've been to being this famous. Is, well, <laughs> this is just a question for me. Did he hit on you? <laughs> he had the most beautiful woman in a fur coat standing beside him. He absolutely did not hit on okay, me. Okay, I was like, absolutely, that didn't answer my question. Absolutely <laughs> did not hit on me, 100%, no. I hope when Eddie Murphy watches this that he'll be like, damn. I should have hit on him. Miss my shot, guys. Absolutely. When he watches this. When? It's only a matter of time. A copy's getting mailed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's Stefan. All right. I, think it's, I know because I'm the chooser oh. that it is Stefan. You can't I be know. wrong. <laughs> yep. I was once at the same outdoor wedding that Jerry Seinfeld was at. Wow. In Thunder Bay? <laughs> <laughs> Not everything I do happens in Thunder Bay. Where am I now? How did I get here? What's the deal with wedding? <laughs> <laughs> where, where were you? Uh, well, believe it or not, I was in Los Angeles, the home of Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> hey, no. Los Angeles, Ontario? <laughs> uh, good, good check, good check. Uh, you know, California. <laughs> How, how is it that you came to both? Oh. L.A. is a big place. How I did mean, the wedding happen? Let's, let's put it this way. If you're in L.A., you're going to end up at a wedding with Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> <It> just, <laughs> the guy, he's like, you know, I think a bit of a wedding crasher, really. <laughs> because first of all, it wasn't Jerry Seinfeld's wedding, obviously. I didn't get invited right. to that. <laughs> Nor was I invited to this wedding. You I weren't was, invited to this no, wedding. I didn't, and I didn't crash it. I okay. was working the wedding. Oh. And everyone's like, this makes uh, more sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, oh. now let's listen to the he man. He does look like the help. <laughs> he does look very good. What did you wear? What was your uniform? What? It was just a tuxedo. <laughs> your Boom. uniform was a tuxedo. <laughs> that is. Were you a stripper? <laughs> <laughs>
Sarah, he's it, on our team. I know. It was, <laughs> no, it was a tuxedo, and for whatever reason, the people throwing the wedding wanted everyone in absolute black because the groom himself was not. He was like wearing an extremely flamboyant suit. It was like powder blue with like sequins and glitter. It was it was so like over the top gauche, but you know, Los Angeles. Okay, here's one. <laughs> here's one that was really weird. So it was little mini T-bone steaks. <laughs> okay, so it was like a cracker and a piece of meat with like this like sauce drop to make it look like it was a T-bone steak. On you're eating the whole steak, yeah. and each one was like so intricate. Did you get tiny utensils. There were, <laughs> guess, guess, where do they find their miniature cows for these? <laughs> <laughs> the magic of Los Angeles, am I right? Yeah. Mini wedding. Sounds good. Yeah. I like that. So, did you have any interaction with the great man? And did I interact with Jerry Seinfeld? Yes. I was working at the wedding. Yeah, but he might have come to taste your little steaks. I never actually got to serve any food directly to Jerry Seinfeld. Okay. There were other like B and C list celebrities there. Like the guy who played Dauber from Coach was there, and like <laughs> I served him a T-bone steak, but <laughs> nobody cared about him. Um, <laughs> I, I embrace this, but I feel like this would be the height of when Seinfeld was happening. Well, let us not presume. When was this? Good oh, uh, what a great question, Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> this would have been post height of Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> Sometime between 1999 and now. Now. But, yeah, yeah. It was actually um, happened in 2008. 2008. So, yeah. so the financial crisis. Oh, People man, are springing yeah. out. I, on you know, T-bones and tuxedos? Right. Wow. I mean, Somebody was just buying up hit all this LA, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> those residuals. That's right. Yeah, right. There were bubbles. There were 2008 bubbles. And one of them was this wedding. Mm. <laughs> Why were you in LA? What were you doing? Oh, that's another great question. Thank I was you. down there for the summer. A friend of mine was working there, you know, like some tech company. And I was like, hey, if you want everyone to come down to LA, I got a couch you can stay on for free. And so I was like, I was there. And then... Some friend of his helped me get set up with the job, but they paid you under the table, so it didn't matter that I didn't have a work visa. Right. Don't, you're committing to a crime. I'll okay. get <laughs> yeah. well, when, we'll edit that. You know, when Eddie Murphy watches this and informs yeah, yeah, yeah. the Los Angeles the police yeah. department, yeah. I'll be in trouble. <laughs> Are you guys ready? I have I one I more question, it. because it, it becomes plausible and then unplausible, and then plausible and then unplausible, and this is and going to break so it. And then so plausible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we'll find out. Oh. Are you ready? What tech company did your friend work for? Work for? Oh, he, uh, quick, 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 what is it? Seagate. What? Seagate. Seagate. Yes. And what do they sell? Uh, hard drives and I networking was... equipment, yeah. He's correct. <laughs> that's You're not a software team, company, that's a <laughs> hardware company. They oh, God, we are no, so No, he said no. tech company, he oh, didn't yeah. say software. Tech. Nice try. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like how Sarah and I got really defensive. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah is my truther, a factor fibbed attorney. <laughs> you can put all, send all questions through her next time. <laughs> Oh, no, I, you're doing, I'm enjoying the support. <laughs> totally. Okay, I, 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 okay. Yeah. I want to. We're oh, oh, two oh. fans. Oh. Wait, you guys Blue don't believe an fib. absolute yeah. lie? Yeah. <laughs> 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 wow, that was good. That was good. He was I also correct. Seagate it does the hard yeah. <laughs> that Team Blue. That sold Team Blue. Good thing I got you. If we learned anything, it's that Seagate sells hard drives. I hate to tell you, there were no mini T-bone steaks. I knew Have it. you they, never had them in your life? Never. What? <laughs> you just invented Opportunity. <laughs> job on, anyone wants to start up a new company. And tiny and pieces of meat. Which is my nickname back in Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> And gold stars for the blue team for getting it yeah. correct. Yeah. I'm, I'm um, trying to be less competitive this round. It's not working out for me. We play for keeps. For <laughs> it's not working out. I'm really trying. Cam, let's go to you Woo. next. All right, here we go. <laughs> Sorry. My dog once picked me out of a lineup and blew my cover. <laughs> <laughs> so, what were you smuggling? I mean, uh, you know, it was 1997, you know, the... Uh, Market of pogs was dwindling, okay. and I figured we I'm needed to bring to those back. Nothing happens in 1997. Nothing happens. And you know, I figured you know people needed more collectibles, and the collectibles world just wasn't delivering. So you know, I called the black market, as you do, and you know, I dialed them up on met, the telephone. Met some you? people, and before you know it, all sorts of collectibles were coming my way, and I didn't know they were stolen, but you know. <laughs> 
you got to do what you got to do to pay the bills, right? So, <laughs> how old were you in 1997? 47. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And he is seven I was five. A, <laughs> I was a young at heart, 47. Have you just been regressing? <laughs> <laughs> this is a yeah, you can say I'm buttoning. Button. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> Makes sense. Me and Brad Pitt are basically the same guy. I support my team so much, but I feel like the mustache, it hits the mustache, and it's just a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I am speaking my truths right now. No, never mind. I don't even right. remember right. what the yeah. question was. This makes, oh, this. Yeah, so anyways, <laughs> the cops found me, and <laughs> Sure enough, I'm in the cop shop, and obviously you don't tell them you did it. Like, you gotta give the story. But then I had this golden retriever, and you know, it was a real straight shooter with honest eyes. And they asked him, they're like, bud, what's going on? And he told them the whole thing. And it was kind of rough because, you know, at first, me and this dog bonded because I was throwing a football one day, and all of a sudden he just caught it. And I'm like, you're a pretty good golden receiver. So then we kind of just kept going from there. So I was a little hurt because I thought we made a bond. I thought we had become friends. You know, I was just this young boy that didn't have a lot of friends. And then all of a sudden I make the football team with the best player on the team. But are you talking about Air Bud right now? Air, Air Bud, what's that? I believe it's a sequel I'm quoting, to Air Bud. Yes. <laughs> Air Bud 2. You have a yes paddle? A yes paddle. Just yes. for this moment. Just for <laughs> jokes, I appreciate. I don't <laughs> yes. <laughs> But what? Yeah, blew my cover. What breed is the dog? Golden Retriever. Yeah. Damn. yeah. <laughs> Were you listening hey, to the fun. story? <laughs> I'm so mad. So how, take us through the details of how the Golden Retriever outed you to the police in the lineup. Well, you know, I was at the cop shop and uh, we had to get ready for football practice. And <laughs> you know, my dog, my bud, he, uh, he was a little upset. I'm so that mad I, right now. <laughs> he was a little upset that I wasn't at practice, and I think there must have been a vendetta. Anyways, yeah. So he's a little upset. So the cops came by. He was in a bad mood. Blew my cover. Ratted me out. And then, um, yeah. Next thing I know, I did five to ten state penitentiary. Five to ten. Yeah. I just want to know if it's true you can't before I make a decision. You want to know if you this know story before is before true. I know that that story's not true. <laughs> what? I think we're ready to vote. <laughs> I'm, I'm, with, I'm with both of you. <laughs> I hate oh. you. <laughs> Stefan, we go to you. Well, all right. Uh, my family was involved in neighborhood tradition of reverse gifting holiday treats. <laughs> What's the worst treat you've gotten? Oh, um, I think you might be misunderstanding the concept oh. of reverse gifting. What is yeah. reverse gifting? Oh, yeah, well, we'll start there. That's a great question. <laughs> So, you're familiar with the concept of gifting, right? Yeah? Gifting? No, please explain. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. I, no I'm yes. pretty sure the audience is familiar with the concept of gifting. I know he's asking the question. Yeah. It's a rhetorical <laughs> question, no, folks. Really We're getting to the details. Well, it's the exact opposite of that. So it's robbing. We're in reverse. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, normally at Christmas, someone comes to your door, they're carrying you know, some treats, maybe in a tin, maybe on a plate with saran wrap, and they give it to you, in this case, what you do is you go to their house, you go into their kitchen, you use their ingredients, you bake goods for yourself, and then you take them and leave. What? Yeah. Thunderbag. 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 Thunder yeah. She knows. She knows. You've, you've been there. I have. Yeah. I have been Ontario's there. crazy. What? <laughs> People just have baking ingredients everywhere. Do they know you're coming? Okay. <laughs> No and then yes. Okay. So, <laughs> this, so they walk into their kitchen and then it's a yes. This is a neighborhood tradition. Okay. And it started accidentally okay. and then it evolved into sort of something that people started to do. So the first time, no one saw it coming. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but after that, people were like, I know what's happening here. No so, one saw it coming, because it was breaking it in. <laughs> Middle of the night, you try not to wake the family. No. So we had this woman in our neighborhood. Her name was Sheila. And I'm going to call her that, because that was her name. And say, wait, 
So Sheila came over um, and she just asked, could she, need, she asked to borrow some butter because she needed some butter for some shortbread cookies or something that she was baking. And then what happened was she came back like 20 minutes later and she's super apologetic and she, she said, oh no, uh, my oven has broken. Can I just bake the shortbread cookies in your house or whatever she was baking? And my, first my mom and her are close. She's like, of course, come in. And we're all chatting. And then as she's baking, she's like noticing that my mom has ingredients that she didn't have. Like, I guess like macadamia nuts or coconut or something like that. And so she's like, oh, I'm just going to start adding those to the cookies. And next thing you know, she's just baking this completely different thing. <laughs> and she, there, is, there is no way that this is a lie. <laughs> because you couldn't remember what was on Jerry Seinfeld's <laughs> hors d'oeuvre tray, but you remember macadamia nuts and coconut. Well, <laughs> macadamia, <laughs> come on, man. That's right. percent true. Well, maybe since the last question, all I've been doing is sitting here thinking of food <laughs> items. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. You flipped it on us. Yes, yeah, specifically right. Christmas-based. <laughs> That's right. You know, I could feel okay. this coming, yeah. So Sheila creates an entirely new goodie. Right. Yes. Yeah. And then... And then she, well, she was originally planning to bring them to a Christmas party, so she didn't leave them with us. She had to take <laughs> okay. them from our home and go. So she came, baked, and left. <laughs> she came baked. As you do. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> So how did Come it up. become, <laughs> I can see it, Sheila and your mom, they're friends. Tell me about case number two, because that seems like a real yeah. jump. Where okay, so now here's where the tradition part comes in, right? So the, ne the next year, my mom, she thought she'd have fun with it. She went and pretended that our oven didn't work. And she okay. says, I need to make some stuff in your house. <laughs> and so she went in there and just started going through her cupboards. <laughs> and made something that she knew she could make, like some sort of like chocolate macaron type cookies or something like that. Like just those ones that are just like a chocolate pile. <laughs> and then I guess they had so much fun telling everyone about it, suddenly everyone in the neighborhood would show up at your door and say, can I use your oven? And everyone was just like, come on in. <laughs> and everyone's just baking stuff for themselves in each other's homes. And this must have lasted like two or three years as a tradition before people started to get kind of annoyed. <laughs> I have a question. Um, when did you finally move out of the Hallmark Christmas movie? <laughs> I know, I want to be yeah. true. Yeah. So bad. You know, you, once you live in one of those cul de sac -y, sort of out of the town, As it is do. a Hallmark movie. Everyone there has been vetted. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I just personally have two moments where I'm like, this has to be true. <laughs> one is... The whole thing. <laughs> the chocolate cookies that you don't bake, those little stacks. So that is, that's, that's real. That's exactly the thing you'd make at Sheila's house <laughs> totally. when you were playing a joke. That's like a so move. true, right? The second is, um, Stefan's from Thunder Bay, Ontario. And I can see how this would be a thing that catches on yeah, because like... there's a lot of inbreeding. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do a say because there's so little to do, but... <laughs> it's it's the inbreeding. Right. <laughs> what caused what? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Chicken egg, yeah. 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 I just want this to be true so bad. Are, are you guys feeling really ready to vote? I think. Oh, we're I'm going to vote. Oh, yeah. I, I am ready to commit. I, Those chocolate yeah. stack cookies, I really that's the want it to be true. It is the season. Tis the season for lies. Oh, <laughs> oh, but the cookies. Well, the cookies are real. Awesome. Of the course cookies they're real. They have a little so well nugget played. of truth. A little nugget so of truth beautifully in done. a so whole pastry plate of lies. I yeah. feel I like this is going one. to take me a couple days to digest. What? That was oh, a lie? I served them to Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> and ever. Hey, Dory. Oh, gee. You're up. <laughs> I've serenaded someone whilst dressed as a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> Would Dorian write whilst? To be fair, <laughs> she has that look. Right? <laughs> yeah. I think so. You all wait her look. She is a serenading in, you know. We all have our <laughs> places. <laughs> yeah, we all have our places. Let them earn. Yeah, yeah. Where, yeah. when was this? Um, so, uh, it was in high school. Okay. And, I made extra money by serenading people <laughs> dressed by, by what did the cards serenading say? people um, for special occasions dressed as a gorilla. Yeah, she did. Yeah, birthday parties. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I did. What was the name of the service? Well, the service, interesting you should ask, was 
called? There's a, there's a true story associated with this. Um, <laughs> I hope so. And it is all true. It's, 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 it's a truth within a truth. There's an association really, of truth to this story for it's, sure. It's layered truth. <laughs> it, it's called, it, it still exists here in Kelowna, here in town. Um, it is called the Tickle Trunk. <laughs> and the irony of this particular thing is uh, my sister, who I didn't grow up with, she's 10 years younger than I am, and in Edmonton, the Tickle Trunk is an adult sex shop. And I'm I... now interested in this story. <laughs> right? What I trunk are you tickling? Get your attention. <laughs> and so my sister, up trunks. until she was 24, thought that when I was a teenager, I worked at a sex shop in Kelowna. <laughs> and it wasn't clarified until she was 24. <laughs> Yes. Follow-up question. Have you worked <laughs> at a sex shop? Not while well, I was a gorilla. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Did you have one song that you sang, or was it a different song? Um, the, it was very difficult to sing in the gorilla costume. That's so not what I asked. It was, <laughs> I sang very little. I sang very little. I would get other people to sing. But you serenaded them. Uh, yeah. E behind the mask of the gorilla. So you had like a band or like a group? <laughs> Called Is this the gorillas. The Chuck e. Cheese? <laughs> They're very famous. Okay. Right <laughs> no, I did not have a band. I would be by myself. <laughs> yeah. You were the bravest. How old were you? 14? No, I I had to drive there. Oh my god. Yeah. And I had balloons. Did you have to drive in the costume? I would put the head on after. And the gloves, because you can't hold the steering wheel. <laughs> and then, I just really wanted somebody to be driving by at a stoplight, gorilla, keep going about your day. I was out of it until she said that. Now I'm like, all right. Also true story, I was singing to some people in a bar, and I wasn't supposed to be there because I was a teenager. <laughs> oh, it's the North and 40. At North and 40. Yeah. And I got a bit handsy. <laughs> The biker at the bar <laughs> clocked me in the head, and I was like, and it was the first time I had been like really punched in the face before. You had the mask on yeah. this time. Yeah, uh, it was. Oh, oh, and I forgot to mention, I also yeah. was wearing a bikini oh. over oh, top the of the gorilla, <laughs> gorilla costume. Okay. There's too many As layers. You. And <laughs> I, I rip. I used to have hair down to my butt. And I had it all in like a bun that was just wrapped up here. And I remember ripping off my helm, my thing, and I went, <laughs> my hair streamed down, and I was like a 16-year-old girl with a big shiner that of where he just punched me, and I was crying. And he was like, like the look on his face was such terror that <laughs> of who he had punched that I was vindicated. <laughs> and I took his balloons. <laughs> and I'm like, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I hope this isn't true. I hope this, because of the trauma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not just of being punched, but of being a sick, can you, 16, you're just driving, yeah. knowing you're gonna put on a gorilla costume and <laughs> sing to a stranger? I was a very good driver at 16. I, that was not the concern. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I are feel you guys like ready? ready? I'm when ready. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> There are times when I'm willing to go out on a limb for a story, and this is <laughs> not one of those times. Thank goodness I'm so competitive. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> really? Yes. I shocked. thought so because you checked your card. I was like, she's she's and telling me. Oh, that did get me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought first I have I to thought... up my game because now I know wow. how good you are and observant. I'm like, I'm gonna lie better. So you actually got <laughs> punched by a Yeah, that wow. actually happened. And, but it wow. felt so good just to be like. You just punched a 16 year old. Yeah, and his face was like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, yeah. balloons are mine. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Wow. wow. Thanks wow. for getting us yeah. the gold wow. star. Another, Another round. Amazing. Another round. Another round. Another round. It is time for the Book of Truths. Oh, the Book oh. of Truths. The Book of Truths. <gasps> okay, so the Book of Truths. In this Book of Truths, there are six cards. They are all true. I'm gonna choose one and read it, and it belongs to someone, one of the comedians sitting here. And I get two questions to ask each of you, and then I have to guess. <gasps> the Book of Truths. <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see, let's you see. You guys should have Pulp Fictioned it and have like a light. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that could have been cool. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> the Book. 
of truths. <laughs> the truth is, I've peed beside a famous bridge. <laughs> Try it on. <laughs> Try it on. Well, you know, guys, uh, I just had to go, you know, so uh, I was out by the Golden Gate Bridge and I just relieved myself. Golden hue <laughs> through the arches. Okay, were you like, no, you were beside the bridge. They were like, there was no height below. That's my question. Yeah, I was, I was on and beside, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So neither. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was on, on. We're gonna on. go with on. Cool. We're going with on. And were you with anyone? You know, I was with all my adoring fans. You know, we were just hanging out, having a good time. They were like, I bet you can't pee over the bridge. I was like, challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Could be true. Could be true. I just bet you that? Hey, I bet you can't pee over the I bridge. Bet. <laughs> I've peed beside a famous bridge. What bridge? Spence's Bridge. Oh, okay. It's very famous locally. Okay. Why were you there? For the corn. That's <laughs> that is what you get in Spence's no Bridge. No more questions yeah. asked. Uh, I've peed beside a famous bridge. Which bridge? Um, the bridge in Scotland. <laughs> the famous one. The famous you bridge. Know this one. The you famous know Loch Ness bridge. You heard of William Wallace? We're still searching for it. Uh, Braveheart. That bridge. That is the bridge. Did the bridge have a Scottish accent? <laughs> I believe it did. <laughs> I believe it did. Go this way. I've peed beside a famous bridge. What city was the bridge in? San Francisco. Was it the Golden Gate Bridge? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I guess those are my two questions. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. It's gonna be hers, I have the least information. <laughs> Think carefully, George. Think carefully. <laughs> Don't squander your questions. Who were you with? Oh, interesting, I was with my brother. And were you the only one peeing? Or did um, he also have to pee? No, I was the only one peeing. He was standing guard. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> You're done. Open-ended question. You're done. <laughs> okay, I've peed beside a famous bridge. What bridge? It was, it was the Golden Gate Bridge. It was the Golden Gate Bridge. A lot of people visiting the Golden Gate Bridge. And why were you at the bridge? I used to live in a van with a guy who was a bluegrass musician. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I was living in a van, so I got really used to peeing, like, wherever I was. So we pulled over, like, it was by, when you're getting on the bridge, there's nowhere to stop. There's not, like, a Timmy's where you can stop and pee. So we pulled over, and what I would do is I would sit out the passenger side door with a map <laughs> on my lap. I'd sit, and I'd just pull my pants to, like, kind of, like, thigh area. Well, with like my butt off the seat and like off of the stepping in area. Van peeing. And then yeah. hold my map so then if people saw me, they go, oh, she's lost, you know? <laughs> and then. Hopefully they don't stop And to they help wouldn't you notice direction. that I'm like actually peeing at the same time. The fact that you planned in cover. Great use of a question, by the way. Props to me <laughs> for you telling a story. Nice. Um, you know, Cam's really spoke to me. <laughs> All the truths, right? All the truths. I'm gonna have to go with Sarah. Sarah. Oh. It was so good, the blue black grass was, is that true? The blue, yeah. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the bridge in Scotland was real? The Stirling Bridge, <laughs> yeah. They don't have camping laws in Scotland. We camped on in the public park of Stirling and no one said anything. And I was like, well, I have to pee, so. The bridge had an accent? Yeah. And it, <laughs> I'm pretty sure when it hit the metal, it was like, oh, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, yeah, there you go. Now we're we'll playing a game called Punchlines. Um, traditionally, a joke has a setup and a punchline. But in our game, the comedians will only be getting the punchline and have to come up with their own setup. Our first punchline I have right here is going to be, or as I like to call it, exposure therapy. Seeing my parents. <laughs> <laughs> I got a sunburn. <laughs> 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 exposure therapy. <laughs> 
The punchline is the secret ingredient. A boy band poster where four of them are standing, but one of them's like this. <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah. Yeah. Safety first. Don't worry, guys, I made sure to put my thong on today. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> so I took Sarah to north of 40. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to always have your gorilla head on before you start singing. <laughs> Safety first. The next punchline is, that's how fire was invented. So this one time I was tearing up a dance floor. <laughs> I rub my legs together in the winter, and that's how fire was invented. The punchline is, at least that's how my father explained it to me. It's worse that I'm a vegetarian than that I'm gay. Or at least that's how my dad explained it to me. <laughs> that tree ain't going nowhere from the top of the car. This is the... Big and oh. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try. I'm not gonna try. Uh, this round will consist of a few improv games. Uh, the first one is invisible props. Uh, so I need a suggestion from the audience of any prop, any object. Weed whacker. Okay, weed whacker is the suggestion. So we're gonna have our improvisers two at a time step forward. Um, and do a little something based off a of weed whack. All right, so you said you wanted a little off the top. <laughs> yeah, just right on the side. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> okay. You've done this before, right? No. Oh. <laughs> All right, I know this sounds weird, but I figured out a new way to make milkshakes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> did you bring the milk? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> you said you wanted a tattoo of a weed whacker? <laughs> I'm 90% done, so I hope that's what she said. <laughs> yes. Great. Very <laughs> Thank you. One more prop. <laughs> Bowling ball. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, j there it is. <laughs> See, I mean, usually strippers go for something cool, but I'm going to be called the bowling ball. <laughs> well, clearly I can't throw it, so one of you has to. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that was the heavy one. <laughs> I legitimately thought that they were bowling bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it for him. <laughs> this next one is called Scene Onion. Two people are gonna step in, start doing a scene. Um, then a third person is gonna jump in, brand new scene. Fourth person's gonna jump in, brand new scene. We're gonna work all the way up and then we're gonna peel the onion back down. We're gonna leave in the same order and follow the scenes back down. We need a suggestion to get started of a location. Car dealership. Yeah. So if you see here in the interior, mm -hmm. it's very moldy, but I feel that it just gives it a scent. Well, so I, I, I was think gonna mention the scent. Like, did it's you? It's earthy. Sell them a new scent. It's called earthy. It's, it's so nice that we get to oh. get out of work and just hang out as though we right? are friends. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I despise yeah. all of you, but. No, yeah. Cheers to that. yeah, thank you. Cheers to hating your guts. The monkey is almost here to start singing, so we all need to hide, okay? okay. Everyone okay. hide. I guess I'm the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> if we're gonna deal with this dead body, then we can't, first of all, Nobody talks about this outside of this circle. Secondly, I've already texted yeah. everybody. Let's Has this it. ever happened to you? <laughs> Your friends just all start sniffing a thing on the ground, <laughs> and you don't know oh. what they're sniffing. I feel like we shouldn't be on the body. Okay. That's yeah. really not Why helping. are we smelling but the that's body? Right. So there was a gorilla we're hiding from. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, just. <laughs> oh, no! You're back up. Do you want oh, another drink? Oh, yeah. yeah. Finally. Oh, sorry, I just drank oh, oh, yeah. I'll go leave. sell this somewhere else. Thank you so much. This. this car is about to explode. Uh, <laughs> would you test drive it with me? No. Ah, that's my answer. <laughs> this game is called Orchestrated Story. So it'll be a story conducted like an orchestra. I will conduct the different storytellers, and as a team, they will tell the best story you have ever heard. A rat. <laughs> this is the best story you've ever heard about a rat. <laughs> so my partner owns a Scirocco, and one time we found a rat when we opened the hood. And it was so fat, just the fattest rat you've ever seen. And you know what? There's a real big market for fat rats in this town. And fat rats are actually delicious. And so we decided to get him on the grill. So he could uh, open up his coat and sell cheese. Uh, and also use me as kind of a puppet. Because I'm a puppeteer. I like to play with rats and do my thing with the puppets that are rats, you know? So to just elaborate here, I had a rat on my head that was extremely fat and I started to get 
I started to get all this attention from everyone in my neighborhood. Like, what's going on? Oh, hang on. And, and I did, it didn't happen when I wore alligator boots. <laughs> because the boots were made of uh, alligator skin and not rat. Now, obviously, if I'm wearing alligator skin boots and we're talking about rats, we're going off topic. But, you know. <laughs> and we, we forgot about the grill. So we had <laughs> the cheese on the grill with the rat. And he was puppeteering me. He's a multitasker that does a lot of different things. Now I'm a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now I have created small plushies of this rat that you could buy and use uh, to form your own sort of cult uh, around <laughs> this rat, which is what I've always wanted. <laughs> and seen. <laughs> <laughs> That's our improv. <laughs> to the comedians again for being on. We've got Stefan Mang, <laughs> Cam Woodman, <laughs> Sarah Dawn, <laughs> Taryn Anderson, <laughs> Dorian Elliott, <laughs> got Jasmine Towers, <laughs> and our host, Jordan Simon. <laughs> Keep clapping. <laughs> <laughs>